welcome to our baking channel. This is our virtual baking classes. I love coming to you and sharing the art of baking because we want kids all over the country to learn to love baking and cooking because it really is an art form and it will be something that they will know for the rest of their lives. By the way, it also teaches math, science, literacy, language skills, planning, social skills, and team building. You, you can't lose learning how to bake. And the best part, you get to eat what you make. How's that? <laughs> we are going to make zucchini bread. One of the best things you can buy in the produce, produce department during the summer is summer squash. And there's all different kinds. There's the spaghetti, spaghetti squash, there's actually pumpkin, which is a squash. But there's also what they call zucchini, and this is what it is. It's a bright green vegetable. Is this a vegetable? Hmm. Let me ask you, is this a vegetable? Let me tell you about it. It grows on a vine, usually lays on the ground when it grows, and when you cut it open, there's seeds. So is this a vegetable or a fruit? You're right. It is a fruit. It's actually a fruit. So tomatoes, they seem like uh, vegetables because they're not sweet, but they're actually a fruit. So this is a zucchini. So first of all, we always do the take, make, bake, right? Take out your tools, take out your ingredients. The making is we're gonna make it and then we're gonna bake. So it's take, make, and bake. That's how we do it, okay? Hey, if you want to join the club, our baking kits, uh, we only have two more days to um, get our pool party baking kit. So go ahead and go to kidsbakingclub.com and get our pool party baking kit. All right, you guys are ready to get started? Now, you know, I was talking about these bowl methods, like there's one bowl method, two bowl methods. It's pretty rare, but this recipe calls for three bowls. So you do need three bowls. What does that mean? More dishes, but hey, we love to do dishes. I actually love doing dishes. Not sure about laundry, but I love doing dishes. So of course we need zucchini, and what the best way to do that is to grate it. Now if you have a food processor, you can grate it that way. But you basically just cut the zucchini, and you just take a grater and you grate it. Watch your fingers, you don't want to get your fingers close. When it gets close to your fingers in the grater, just stop you know, cut it up for salad or you can use it for dinner um, that night in a stir fry. So that's what you're gonna do to make sure. And I have about two cups of zucchini here. So that's my first bowl. I've got two cups of grated zucchini. Now I'm gonna go to my dry ingredients. My dry ingredients, it calls for two cups of all-purpose flour, which I already have in here, and one teaspoon of salt. Now some people might say, why is that so much salt? Because normally you, in a recipe you add butter, and usually butter has salt in it. So since we're not using butter, we're gonna add salt into it because it just kind of takes out it being so sweet, so you add a little bit of salt. We're going to add one teaspoon of baking soda, which is our leaven, and we're adding another leaven, baking powder. And the reason why there's so much leaven is this because the zucchini is heavy, and we want to make sure it rises in the oven. Then it also calls for one teaspoon of cinnamon. I've already ground that. I didn't ground it. Did I say I grounded it? I did not ground this. It came that way. And then you're going to add a half a teaspoon of some other spice, or you don't have to. So usually you can do allspice or nutmeg or ginger, but I'm using because it's almost fall, I'm using a half a teaspoon of what's called pumpkin pie spice. It has all kinds of yummy stuff. And we're going to mix that. We want to make sure all the dry ingredients are mixed really, really well. We are going to go to our, you probably can guess, we have our zucchini, we have our dry ingredients, what goes next? our wet ingredients or our liquid ingredients. So the first we're going to do is we're gonna use two eggs. I'm using brown eggs today. I like to buy the brown eggs that has the omega-3 in it. Go ahead and open it up. And you 
always want to dry your hands after that. Just get all of that off. If you're close to a sink, go ahead and, um, and we're just going to stir that up. So we want to mix the eggs together. You always want to mix your eggs before you add more ingredients because you don't want clumps of a yolk one place and the egg white somewhere else. And now we're going to add one cup of brown sugar. You can also substitute brown sugar for one cup of maple syrup, pure maple syrup, or one cup of honey. And then one half cup of sugar. And once again, you don't have to add the sugar. You can actually make it a cup and a half of honey or maple syrup. Now, instead of adding one entire cup of oil, which would make it's super moist because oil does make your baked goods really moist. We're going to add a half a cup of applesauce. Now there's ways you can buy applesauce either sweetened or unsweetened. I bought the unsweetened kind because we don't need more sweet in here, right? But we love the apple. What the applesauce is going to do is it's going to moisten the batter when it's baking. But we are going to add one half cup of oil. You can use vegetable oil, canola oil, you could even add avocado oil, which would be really cool because you're already using a fruit in here, so it's just adding one more. Now, one thing that's optional, you can add a teaspoon of vanilla if you want. If you don't want to, that's fine too. I love the smell of vanilla, <laughs> so I am adding it. Now, while I'm stirring this, we're gonna do an add-in. Now, I'm gonna add in three-fourths cup of chocolate chips, but you can also add in three-fourths cups of chopped nuts, like walnuts or pecans or almonds. I actually am a little bit allergic to walnuts, so I'm not going to use that. I'm gonna add the chocolate chips instead. Okay, now that we have all this, guess what? Now we get to combine it all together. So I'm going to add my flour. I'm going to stir that a little bit. Now because it's a bread, I don't want to mix it too much. I don't want it airy. I want it nice and moist and dense. And so we don't want to break down the gluten that is in the flour. But hey, if you're using gluten-free flour, go ahead. So now that it's just a little bit moistened, I'm going to add my two cups of zucchini. Oh my goodness. Now this is the time you want to turn on your oven. Go ahead and turn it on to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Add my three-fourths cup of chocolate chips. Just to add a little bit. You know, breads, these are called quick breads because there's no yeast in them. They make the most amazing gifts. If you know someone that would just love to get a loaf of bread or some zucchini muffins, this is the perfect recipe. You know, put it on their doorstep and surprise them. Now, I'm going to take a loaf pan. This is my um, tried and true loaf pan. You can tell I've had it for a very long time, but it's part of a stone, so it bakes evenly. It's really good. And I put some parchment paper in here, but you can actually just oil it yourself. And now we're going to pour this in. Oh, are you kidding me? This looks amazing. If you could smell this, it smells so good. Now, if you're doing muffins, use either cupcake liners or oil the inside cavity of the cupcake muffin tin, and then you're gonna bake it for about 15 minutes to 20 minutes. You'll see it to start to rise. But if it's a bread, you're going to put this in the oven for one hour. I know, but it's got to bake through. Thank you for joining me. We will see you next time. All right, bye-bye.